the second of four blood moons will occur on Wednesday, friends. The second of the Tetrad. This is a recent article perhaps you have looked at and already seen, but I'd like to discuss it a little more. And you've seen me before make um, videos about this Tetrad and these moons. Many people think uh, nothing to them. It's just a thing. Happens all the time. Well, in a way they're right. But in the biggest way they're wrong. And let's, let's discuss this article and what it's saying. It is telling you that there's a quote-unquote impossible lunar eclipse happening this week. And I will say that is a nice little description there. And it's telling you that not all the lunar eclipses are equal. And on Wednesday, the second of the four blood moons of the Tetrad, you will get to see one of the rarest types called a Selenium Leon, or horizontal eclipse. It's not going to last that long, so you have to be quick. You have between two and nine minutes to catch this, as they call it, a crazy light trick. I'd like to add that God is a fantastic God, and nothing is impossible with Him. All things are possible with Him. So, not only are you getting to see another blood moon, but you're getting to see a blood moon that's even rarer than a, a, a normal blood moon lunar eclipse. Most of the time, a lunar eclipse will occur well before sunrise, but that won't be the case on Wednesday morning. The Earth is going to pass between the sun and the moon, eclipsing the moon in the process, which will begin at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and last through sunrise, but only on the East Coast. That means during a brief window, in this case between two and nine minutes, people on the East Coast will be able to see the sun rise and moon set at the exact same time. Let me say that again. People on the East Coast are going to be able to see the sunrise and the moon set at the exact same time. This is a rare event. I can't say that I've ever seen that happen myself. God's talking to you. Are you listening? He's showing you a rare event as part of his tetrads on his holy days. Those are his holy days when these are occurring on. <clears throat> By that, I mean you've already had one on April the 15th. And you're going to have one. Yeah. You're going to have one on October. The 8th. Not man's times, his times. Plenty of times both the sun and the moon are visible during the day at other times of the year, but during a lunar eclipse, a chance to see both the sun and the moon at the same time is simultaneously is really, really rare. Because geometrically speaking, the kind of phenomena should not be possible. They're telling you this should not be possible, but it is, according to them, going to occur. During a lunar eclipse is one of the only times the moon and the sun are exactly 180 degrees apart on Earth's sky. That means right after the moon is set, the sun should rise, making it technically impossible to see both at once. But this is where they're going into light bending and such. A simple trick of the light changes everything, and as a result, crafty observers to it's wild and otherwise impossible events. Observers in Australia, Western Asia, islands in the Pacific, and much of the North America will get a chance to observe this rare event. Because our atmosphere refracts or bends light at an angle near the horizon, it creates an optical illusion that both the sun and the moon appear are slightly higher in the sky and therefore less than 180 degrees apart. This, as a result, you're going to get a tiny window where you can see both orbs simultaneously. 
Now, it's saying unless you're on top of a mountain or in the middle of the ocean, you might be hard-pressed to catch this trick of the light. And they're coming. This is the this is the best part of it, I believe, because it's the point I'm going to ram home. Furthermore, we are in a rare series of lunar eclipses. This lunar eclipse is the second of a series of four consecutive total lunar eclipses. The first total lunar eclipse was April the 15th, 2014, on a Jewish holy day, on God's holy time, his meeting time, his feast time, not man's time. It's him who calls these dates. They do belong to him. Never forget that. And the next two will be on April the 4th and September 28th of next year. This series of total lunar eclipses is rare, and the next series of four consecutive total lunar eclipses will not occur until the year 2032. So understand what they have just told you in this article at the end where I just got done talking about it. They are telling you these eclipses are rare, and you will not see a series of four consecutive lunar eclipses until 18 years from now in 2032. What have they not told you in this article about the series of four total lunar eclipses called the Tetrad? What did they leave out and not tell you? You know what it is. You got a feeling you know what I'm going to say, don't you? And it is what I'm going to say. They did not mention one thing about these four that we are going through now and the two in 2015. They did not say one thing about all four consecutive ones, 2014 to 2015, all fall on Jewish holy days, God's holy time. They didn't mention a thing. They make it seem as if it's not a big deal and you're going to see the same occurrence in the year 2032, but you're not going to see the same occurrence in 2032. And you know why? Because in the year 2032, they're not going to fall on Jewish feast dates, God's holy days. That's what's not going to happen in 2032, which does not mean that these are just the current ones are just run-of-the-mill every day or every year or every 10, 14 years, whatever, how many years, lunar eclipses. So you see how they leave out some very, very important information that differentiates the four that are happening now from these that will occur in 2032. You understand? These ones now are way more important and way more different because they fall upon God's holy days. And, not, and even to add to that, they're telling you that on top of what I just spoke about, this is a even more rare type of a lunar eclipse where you will get to see the sun and the moon at the same time. A sunrise and a moon set. And they are saying at the exact same time. So how perfect is God when he can make something like that happen? How perfect is he? <clears throat> They want to go scientifically and tell you it's a, it's a trick of the light. It's a trick. It's a trick. It's nothing is a trick with the Lord. Nothing. It's intentional. It's made to, to wow you and get your attention and, and uh, 
He's, he's trying to show you something. He's trying to alert you to something. Now, if you look it up, you find that four consecutive blood moon total lunar eclipses tetrad will not on on any holy days are not going to occur for a much longer time than the year 2032 it'll be way way past the year 2032 by far before you will see four more blood moons on God's holy days. So you need to think about it. You need to understand it's God and science, um, you know, man science and God science don't mix. Because man science always leaves God out of the equation and gives him absolutely no credit for anything. Man science always thinks they can come up with a man answer for everything as to what it is, why it is, when it is, where it is, how long it is, how far it is, you know what I'm saying. So we're halfway through them. All you have to do is think about all the things that you've seen so far and think about all the way till next September and combine that with the Shemitah year and what Shemitah is actually all about. And then think about it, I believe after the Shemitah year, you get into a Jubilee year, if I remember my reading. And then think about everything about that. <clears throat> so will we see a stock market crash or something uh, like that? Will we see something that has to do with Israel? Will we see something more of a change in the world and uh, more of a problem with this um, creation that's been created called ISIS and the continued allowing and the helping of uh, this monster called ISIS to continue to eat up towns and uh, spread out and dominate and uh, you know, make their caliphate grow and be bigger and gain more control. Because you have to be honest, since Barack Obama came in, like I've said, you've seen Mubarak go down, you've seen Saddam go down and be captured and, and the Iraqi thing. You've seen the Afghanistan stuff that we've done. Gaddafi's dead. We want to get rid of Assad. You know, They've already said that. That's common knowledge. You've basically seen the Middle East turned upside down and, and allowed to become what it has now become. You've seen the rise of Islam, and um, we've had a lot of Islamic speakers and those that have written articles and stuff, and what they say is that the type of uh, Islam that ISIS is practicing is true Islam. They are calling the, you know, the people that say it's a peaceful religion and... Um, that the people like ISIS and whatnot that practice it very, you know, hardcore Sharia type laws, uh, that they are not real practitioners of true Islam, that they're radicals. But these people are saying no. The people that are practicing the peaceful type, that are saying that ISIS is a bunch of radicals. Those people are apostate to the, to the Islamic religion. They pick and choose what they want to accept and how they want to do it. So what they're saying is when it comes right down to it, ISIS is the real Islam and everyone else is apostate to the real Islam. And there are certain things that uh, Islam allows uh, other uh, Muslims to kill other Muslims. Uh, Supposedly, if you commit adultery, uh, you can kill them. Supposedly, if, um, if you kill another Muslim without a valid reason given by uh, the Quran, then you can kill someone. And then if they're practicing Islam and they are apostate, you can kill the, another Muslim. So that's what I have to say about that. You should think about it.